Hello everyone, welcome to this week's Maritime Innovation Updates. I wish you all have had a good week. First of all, I would like to thank Claudia and Dennis for organizing this event. My name is Andy and I will be uh, your event moderator today. As always, this event has two parts. It will start with a short presentation of the topic of the week. And at the end of presentation, there will be a short Q&A sections where you can ask questions freely. This presentation will be recorded and therefore please turn off your camera and mic microphone during the presentation. Thanks a lot. This time we'll cover some ground on the topic performance prediction and weather routing of wind assisted ships. I'm very excited to have my colleague Nils Hagemeister here to talk about this topic today. Nils is an expert in ship design, computational fluid dynamics, and also an enthusiast in sailing. I'm sure his deep and solid understanding in the maritime world is going to give us some interesting insights. Nils, the stage is yours. Yes, thanks Andy for this uh, very kind introduction um, and also a warm welcome from my side. Um, I think I will start straight away. So the my presentation is uh, titled Performance Prediction and Weather Routing of Wind Assisted Ships. And uh, it's split into two parts. Um, so we have the performance prediction part and then the weather routing part. Um, for the performance prediction, uh, you can use different approaches. Uh, there are generic models, uh, which are quite often used in ship design. Uh, then you can use measurements to create a data-based model. And um, today we will be concentrating on uh, what we call a ship-specific model, which is a model uh, which takes into account the specific fluid dynamic characteristics of a ship. Likewise, um, for the weather routing part, um, one can focus on the fuel consumption or the efficiency um, or on safety. Um, since we want to maximize um, the benefit of the wind assist system, we will today concentrate on the on the fuel consumption part. So these are the two things um, that I will be talking about. And I will start with the uh, performance prediction. Um, and I will explain this uh, with an example. Um, the example is uh, the Windskip, uh, which is a car carrier designed um, in Norway by a company called Lade AS. And the, the most significant feature of this design is that the superstructure has an aerofoil shaped cross section. So the idea is that the uh, superstructure acts as a sail um, and provides forward thrust. So it's a passive system without any further trimming options. Um, for this design, uh, we have yeah, quite a lot of uh, data available um, in terms of the fluid dynamic characteristics, as I said earlier. Um, I don't want to go into too much detail here, but basically we have a three degree of freedom model here um, in search, sway and yaw. Um, yeah, about the, the aerodynamic and hydrodynamic uh, forces and moments. Um, the model, um, I should mention, also includes uh, the reaction to sea state, um, which has quite a huge influence on the performance of the ship. Um, but yeah, what do we do with this data? Um, and so we need to look at, at some sailing theory um, to actually yeah, use this data in a meaningful way. Uh, so what we would like to have is a sail that we put onto our ship and that provides a thrust force. But if you put a sail on our ship, what we actually get is a thrust force and a transverse force and also a yawing moment. Um, so yeah, there's nothing for free basically to be had. And on the other hand, um, Newton says that if we want to uh, move steadily in a straight line, then we must not have any external force which means that all the forces and moments acting on the ship need to be in equilibrium. Um, so this is something we need to take into account um, when we do the performance prediction. So how do we implement this? Um, our strategy is um, to use the fluid dynamic data from our three degree of freedom physics model and run it through a constraint optimization procedure. 
And the objective here is that we minimize the total resistance. And as a constraint, uh, we set the equilibrium condition uh, of the forces and moments that I mentioned. And the variables in this optimization process are the rudder and leeway angles. And what do we get as a result is the performance envelope of the ship. Um, with the, the main result is the power as the function of each uh, individual combination of speed of the ship and wind and wave conditions. Um, but what we also get, which is quite important, is the optimum settings for leeway and rudder angles. Um, so in this case, we have quite a, a simple wind assist system because it's passive. Um, but you can imagine that you could also put uh, wing sails or a flatner rotor on top of it. And then this optimization procedure would also enable you to um, define the optimum sheeting angles, for example, for your sails or the rotational speed of the flatner rotor. If we go further and have a further look at the result um, with this plot, so this plot um, shows an example of the performance prediction um, as a function of the, the true wind angle. So in, in orange, we have plotted the, the brake power required to propel the ship, in this case at a speed of 15 knots, and the true wind speed in this case is 9 meters per second. As a reference, uh, we've added the brake power for zero wind. And as you can see, um, in headwinds, um, obviously there's higher resistance, um, so we need a little bit of additional power, but from about 25 degrees true wind angle onwards, uh, we actually get a benefit. So there's the resistance is lower. And the, the maximum benefit we have here is, is about 800 kilowatts, which is about 16% compared to the uh, no wind case and the average benefit we get here is about 400 kilowatts. Um, the dotted or dashed lines um, represent the, the rudder or leeway angles respectively and you can see how they change over the course of the, the wind angle. So um, now since, since we have solved the, the issue of the performance prediction, we can turn our attention to the weather routing. Um, for this, we are using an A star algorithm on a dynamic grid. And um, yeah, they, we create the grid basically while we're doing the, the calculation and uh, the procedure is depicted on the right. So from an existing uh, node on our path, we create isochronic nodes uh, by doing an angle sweep. And uh, we use the speed over ground uh, from the performance prediction to yeah, spawn a new generation of points. Um, for this case, with the objective of minimum fuel consumption, um, we estimate the the cost or the remaining cost for the remainder of the of the voyage uh, based on the calm water performance of the ship and the distance to the finish. And the actual cost um, comes from the performance prediction. Also, in this case, uh, we do have some constraints. So for this specific case, um, the customer was um, very much focused on keeping the ship on, on schedule. Um, so for the routing, we fixed the estimated time of arrival, uh, which means we adjusted the velocity for any detours from the shortest route. Um, in general, uh, we could also use other constraints um, but yeah if you want to vary the the speed you need one additional time related constraint um, so you, you could also fix the speed or you could could fix the the power um, but something uh, in relation to time has to be fixed otherwise your ship will just uh, start going slower and slower to save fuel um, what we also um, have implemented is obstacle avoidance with geofencing um, so we take into account land masses. Um, so basically on land masses, we don't spawn any new points. Um, same goes for areas with harsh weather. Um, so we have implemented the IMO guidelines um, to avoid surf riding, broaching to and parametric or synchronous rolling. And these are yeah, taken into account. Um, what we can also do is um, include intermediate waypoints, for example, if you need to adhere to a traffic separation scheme, um, 
then this could um, also be implemented. And um, yeah, the result of our calculation um, is shown here. Um, this routing was done for a service speed of 14 knots, and um, we calculated uh, a voyage duration uh, for the loop uh, starting from Emden going to Jacksonville in the US, uh, onwards to Veracruz in Mexico, and then back across the Atlantic to Emden. Um, and the, yeah, we calculated a voyage duration of about 768 hours and the fuel consumption on average was 15.8 tons per day. And as you can see on the outbound journey, um, yeah, there are quite some some kinks and edges in the in the course um, yeah, where the ship reacted on changes in the weather, mostly the wind direction. And on the way back, um, the, the course is more uh, similar to the Great Circle route. And uh, this is the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. And uh, yeah, I'm open to any questions. Is it okay to just talk and ask, ask a question? Yeah, please go ahead. Okay, hello. I'm Robert from Novia in Finland. Hello. Thanks, Thanks for a very interesting uh, presentation. Uh, I was wondering, like, um, I missed like the first maybe one minute, so maybe I missed it. But um, of course, the weather uh, forecast is something with a um, built in sort of reliability or like the for the let's say two days ahead it's quite reliable even in the middle of the atlantic but for five days ahead it gets less reliable so would a better route and algorithm take that into account or um so in i mean it's a very good question and uh, obviously yeah the reliability of the weather forecast um has a well, creates some issues um what we usually recommend to do is to update the weather routing um, whenever you get a, a new forecast along the route. So most of the, the ships are nowadays have a satellite internet connection. And I think um, the biggest models are run usually three to four times a day. Uh, so you could update your weather information accordingly and then update um, as, yeah, as needed. Um, there are other approaches. I mean, you could also um, take statistics into account and you could also um, like in different ways. Uh, so so one way would also be you could um, try to to cash in early gains, let's say, where the weather forecast is reliable. And then for the later part of the journey, um, you could try to just just minimize the fuel consumption based on on statistical weather routing um, but i think yeah you can always also go wrong relying purely on on statistics because if your weather is not according to your statistics then um, yeah with a sail ship you can also end up in in headwinds which is like the worst case scenario yeah of course yeah i think intuitively you would sort of do both, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for the question. Yes, I also wanted to ask uh, something. And John Andrea Manarini from CNCC. Um, about the weather, um, is it uh, treated uh, um, as a binary constraint in the sense that uh, the uh, vessel uh, can either go through or not go, or is there any involuntary speed loss through weather? Um, so we take into account the, the speed loss uh, due to wind and wave conditions. So that's what we do in the performance prediction part. Um, so yeah, if if the for example, um, what we have also implemented here is that if the required power to, to keep the ship going at a 
at a given speed, if it exceeds the installed power or the maximum continuous rating, then obviously the ship cannot reach the speed and has to go slower. Uh, we take that into account. Um, so basically we do both, because on the other hand, um, if the, the weather is too bad and um, yeah, basically, according to the IMO guidelines, it is considered dangerous to go there. Then we rule it out as a in form of this binary, um, yeah, uh, that you mentioned. Okay, and uh, if I may ask a second question, uh, you also mentioned the, um, that you have a constraint on the total uh, duration of the voyage. Uh, is correct? Um, and if yes, uh, um, how do you ensure this? Uh, this constraint is it done through iteration or do you have any modification on your a star algorithm uh, basically what we do is um we increase for if we take a detour we increase the speed to keep the estimated time of arrival and um we found that um for most um calculations that we do um, I mean, you can always have the situation that you hit very harsh weather at the end and you just cannot sp keep your speed. But for most of the calculations that we've done, that has not happened. So we've always uh, found a way to to speed up along the journey um, to uh, make the estimated time of arrival. I see. Thank you very much. Um, I mean, for us, it's a little bit, little bit easier um, in the calculations um, because we are just using the the weather forecast so but if you if you update along the route I mean you can't foresee the weather like really 10 days out um, so I mean our calculation is a calculation based on the prediction um, and yeah we, we discussed earlier that uh, there are some some issues with the reliability uh, of the of the prediction but um, yeah we have to work with what we have basically sure thank you you're welcome i have another question then um the you did the uh the cfd model to get the performance predictions um do you know because i've read about this ship but not in detail like um how much different is that, let's say, if you do exactly the same for an ordinary ship? How much more or less? Um, well, I guess it's less, but how much less? Do you happen to know how much less uh, wind power you would get from just an ordinary ship? Um, I think, I mean, in terms of the wind power, I, I think what I can do is, is describe a little where I would see the biggest differences. So um, I would expect that for an ordinary ship, um, you would get um, additional resistance almost all the way up to uh, 90 degree true wind angle, yes. um, because it does not have this the same uh, properties um, of, of this uh, wing shape. And therefore, yeah, I mean, if you look at a container vessel, it's it's basically, the, the superstructure is just a block, right. so it would mostly have resistance. And um, I can imagine that downwind you would get a similar, or like with wind from the back, you would get a similar um, push, um, but you will not get the same pull uh, with more forward wind angles. Right. That's why I would see the biggest difference. Yeah, I I, I I would agree, but it would be. I was just wondering if you would have some like actual numbers by accident or so. <laughs> No, we, I mean, we do have some, I mean, there are some publications out there, um, but yeah, most of the ships, um, you will see that they mostly create resistance uh, as long as there's a forward component to the wind. Yeah, because, okay, the interesting question then becomes, I think, the amount of potential fuel savings per ship container or something. Yeah, yeah I mean, um, and it's quite clear. I mean, also a, a normal ship can also uh, benefit massively from weather routing. This yes. is not restricted to wind assisted ships, uh, but you could also do this in, the, in a similar way for, for normal ships and you would also gain something. 
Yeah, yeah, that so that was then my maybe my final question is that like uh, are you guys running or are you planning to run now um, this whole sort of algorithm, let's say for um, over um, statistics of real world, um, not statistics, but collected uh, weather information from let's say the last five years, and you could have a ship going back and forth like simulated or use the weather, the real weather as measured for the last five years and let the ship go back and forth for whatever it takes, like two trips a month or something. Yeah, so, so you see like in how, like how much is gained in the period of a year or five years or something on typical weather or an average or whatever. Yeah, so what we looked at, so we we did um, calculations with hindcast data mm -hmm. um, for one year, um, but we only so far so far we we don't really have a a reference um, case. So we only provided our customer with the um, basically the average fuel consumption over one year. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, obviously the next. Well, one of the ideas we also had would be to also um, yeah, have another like a reference ship with a, sh a similar capacity but different design and test it on the same route and, and to see um, where that comes out. Okay, cool. Very nice work. Thank you. Okay, if there are not uh, no any other questions, maybe I have one for you. Um, so you mentioned about uh, weather information. So what? how can we gather such information? What are the source available nowadays? Um, so for these studies, um, I mean, sometimes uh, our customers uh, provide their own weather information. So there are free sources and, and there are um, sources we you need to pay for um, one of the free sources um, which we use if we do not get provided uh, weather information is the global forecast system uh, from the us um, which has just been updated earlier this year um, and it now includes all the information uh, that you need in a in a single file so we, we get the wind information and the wave information as well and it, it used to be separated between two different forecast systems, um, but it's now been combined in the, in the new version of the global forecast system. That's basically the standard. Um, I believe that also a lot of other people are using. And then, yeah, there are also um, other options where you can pay weather services or private forecasters uh, if you want to go and, and have slightly more accurate data, maybe. Um, there are also a lot of regional models um, around the world um, but for the for the large ocean crossing ocean crossings, you need to um, usually um, refer to these uh, yeah large scale models like the GFS. Thanks a lot. Are there un any other questions? Maybe we can allow the one final question. If not, um, thanks a lot for the very informative lecture from Niels, and also thank you all for the active participation in the discussion. I think that uh, this also concludes the Maritime Innovation Update for this week. Next week, again, at 12 o'clock noon, we will introduce you to the new German-Finnish research platform, FIB S2 at NOFIA, and we'll have the chance to meet and talk to the directors who are leading the project. The speakers will be Hans Christoph Bormeister from Fraunhofer CML and Merva Sarokopi from Nofia University of Applied Science, our Boa Mare Maritime Academy. We wish you all have a very nice weekend and we look forward to seeing you again next week. And goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks a lot. See you.